And welcome to another episode of Gymnasticsville. I'm your host, Midnight Robin, and we're ready to get it started today in the bird's nest. The action figure is here over there in the middle. How you doing, Carrie? I'm good. Working out. Nice. Are you gonna do that? Are you gonna flex every time? Is that, is that might be thing? my new might be my new signature, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. And all the way over here. Finally on the show, the 2020 Nissan Emory Award winner, Steven Nederosic from Penn State. How you doing? I'm good. How are you? Doing good, man. I just want to thank you for coming on to the show. Yeah, of course. Thanks for having me. Yeah, no problem. So let's get right to it. You're the 2020 Nissan Emory Award winner. Just talk me through when you got the announcement and you won it and kind of what were some of the things that were going through your mind? Yeah, um, well, it was really exciting. Um, it, it was a little different than usual. We were on a Zoom call instead of being at the NCAA uh, uh, conference dinner. Um, so it wasn't the setting that you know, you, you'd want, but um, it was really exciting. And I was just so happy to be part of that like group of guys that were even nominated for it. Uh, when uh, they they announced that I won, I mean, I was speechless. Like, <laughs> I, I feel like a lot of guys like have like a really good speech prepared because like they know for a fact that they're gonna like win the award. But um, you know, I thought like I had a pretty good shot. Like, but there's a lot of really good people that were nominated. Uh, so I didn't go so hard on to like actually like making a like a speech and like writing it out and stuff. Um, so when it was like announced that I won, I mean, I was just speechless and, um, I'm just beyond honored to have received it really. Wow. That's great. So when did you know you were, you were nominated for the award and who told you? Oh, um, I believe when I was nominated, I was, oh, I can't remember where I was. I might've been coming back from a competition Okay. I think it might have been when I was coming back from Baku, actually. Um, yeah, that was that was really exciting. That was actually one of the goals that I wanted um, throughout my collegiate career was just to be nominated for such a prestigious award. Yep. Yep. Nice. Awesome. Okay. Um, we just found out. No 2020 major events for USA Gymnastics. That includes USA Championships, the men's qualifier. I mean, those are obviously the two biggest competitions um, of the year, you were in contention to make yet another national team and get, you know, opportunities to, well, before the Olympics were pushed back, Olympic team birth and all that. So with everything going on and now just finding out that there's no national championships, what were your first thought when you found out? Um, I, I kind of saw it coming, you know, just where the country is or where the world is. It's the safest option by far. Um, it's very disappointing because more than anything, I just want to get back into, you know, doing my thing on pommel horse and rocking some really great routines for people to watch. Um, it is really disappointing, and I hope that everyone is as fortunate as I am. I have a pommel horse in my backyard, um, so I'm, I'm just, I hope that everyone can get in what they can right now, and, you know, eventually we'll get past these times, um, but just staying motivated and, you know, looking forward to the events that will happen in 2021 is what's keeping everyone motivated right now. And, and quite frankly, I don't think a lot of people um, expected USAG to go through with USAs. Okay. Um, it's definitely a smart decision on their part. So um, I'm not so disappointed in it because I kind of saw it coming. Steven, I want to ask you a question about the mindset, uh, knowing that the Olympics is now pushed back. Uh, what's your mindset um, as far as your training and your training cycle? You know, can you explain how much it, it does affect your training cycle um, or or not affect your training cycle that now that the Olympics is pushed back? Um, so the fact that the Olympics was pushed back wouldn't have had so much of like an effect on me. Um, I would have just kept training the same way, but now that gyms are closed and, uh, you know, I'm working on some really old equipment, um, it's pretty tough to be able to get those numbers in that I would in, like, an actual facility. Um, I've definitely lost my endurance to be able to do, like, a full routine as of right now, but I think it's just really important to keep up with, like, flexibility and strength 
And when I finally do get back into the gym, I'll be able to rock it, uh, given some time. So. Um, all right. I, all right. I got another question. Even with this layoff, uh, going when you get back into the gym, would this inspire you to try uh, another event? You know, per se, parallel bars, high bar. You know, are you feeling it to say, hey, you know what? Maybe I, you know, I can't get in on what you know. Try another event to see how I, uh, you know, compete. Well, you know, I've always like miss doing other events it's pretty tough being a specialist and going to a competition only doing one event um especially when it doesn't go your way and you you just like oh man i want to get into another event and just like rock it make this a good competition um so you know maybe i will be playing around on p-bar things right? yes, dismounts exactly wow. it's always fun to do some p-bar dismounts p-bar dismounts for sure <laughs> so i actually had a question to more of a follow-up to carrie's so when you were going into Penn State, were you a specialist going in or did you do other events? Um, yeah, no, I did all around throughout my entire jail career. Okay, but, I was um, wrong. I was wrong, everybody. I thought you came in as a specialist, the only event you did. My bad, my bad. <laughs> I did all the events, right? But, uh, you know, I just kind of, uh, when I was getting recruited, I kind of labeled myself as someone that people would really want on horse, so... Uh, you know, when I got to Penn State, looking at all these guys that are like crazy good at every event, I was just like, yeah, I should stick to horse and just make line up here. <laughs> right. Yeah. Hey, man. It, and, it, and it's proven to have been a great formula for you, you know, throughout your career. And then now winning the uh, Nissan M reward, you know, we're comparing that to the Heisman Trophy, you know, in football or the what in, in basketball is the Joan Wooden Award, is it? I don't know who's. Uh, what it is in basketball. The John um, Wooden. Or is, is, it that, John Wooden? is that to the coach? I mean, uh, I maybe I'm not play. sure. I'm not going to sure. fact check that one. But, yeah, but, you know, it's just a, a prestigious award. And, um, you know, how does it feel to be amongst the company if you uh, if you know who's on the, you know, of past Nissan Emory Award winners? And usually, I think, in the ceremony, past Nissan winners – are there at the ceremony just like at the Heisman. So unfortunately you didn't get to experience that. Um, it'd be cool if they, you know, have something for you, you know, once things open back up, I think that would be really great. Um, but, you know, I, I think in the next year you'll be invited to come and be a part of the ceremony for the next guy, I'm sure. Um, so, you know, what is it like to be a part of this kind of uh, elite club? Um, yeah. Well, first of all, I, you know, I really hope they do sound like that next year. That'd just be amazing, <laughs> you know. But, um, you know, I, I remember distinctly walking into Penn State for one of the first times going into, like, the gymnastics facility. And we just had this really great display of, uh, you know, Nissan Emory Award winners, Olympians, NCAA champions. And, you know, I was just like, wow. Like, you know, we have six guys at the time that won the Nissan Emory Award, you know, which is, like, that prestigious. Um and I, I just never would have thought that, like, I would have a chance, you know, just being a specialist. And, like, the people on the wall that have won it in the past are just, like, these animals, like, in the all-around, you know? So uh, definitely something that I never would have imagined freshman year I could somehow come out uh, winning such a prestigious award. And it just feels amazing. And uh, on top of that, I hope that, um, in a way, I can help to inspire other specialists maybe to motivate them a little further uh because it's in their reach they can do it too right <laughs> absolutely absolutely so i kind of want to talk a little bit about your time at penn state you know it probably flew by but now you know you are you were a senior this year your career is over penn, for penn state when you look back on your time there and when you first got there as a freshman, did it exceed your expectations with your time there, or what? What was your kind of, you know, out, you know, whole feeling on your whole time at Penn State? Um, yeah, well, going into Penn State, I had some really big goals for myself. I knew that uh, this quad was going to have a specialist spot, and even as a freshman, I was really motivated, and I really wanted to be able to be the person to like earn that spot. Um, on top of that, I also had some really big aspirations regarding NCAA. I wanted to win NCAAs. And uh, fortunate enough for me, freshman year, I was actually able to do that. And um, I would say that I didn't have any expectations. I had a lot of goals. 
And I think that the coaching staff and the teammates and, um, you know, just the people that surround me at Penn State were able to help me um, and guide me towards those goals. And, um, you know, I'm just forever thankful for the work that they've done for me. I want you to revisit the, the Melbourne World Cup where you broke through, you won your first gold medal in the World Cup. I know you were, you were close a few times. Can you talk about, because I know Gio did a good job of interviewing you, can you just revisit finally breaking through and winning and winning that medal? Um, yeah, absolutely. Um, that World Cup was really special um, because it was – um, one of the last three, it was the first of the last three World Cups, and I knew I had to win the next three in order to earn that specialist spot individually through through like my own path. Um, so there was a lot of nerves, a lot of tension going into it. Uh, we ended up getting there, I believe, Sunday night, and it was like a 33-hour trip there. So um, I was pretty exhausted, and I had a competition on Thursday, so... Uh, I really just worked so hard when I got there. I didn't feel great at all. Um, you know, bad workouts, but they slowly got better. And by Wednesday, um, I had to make the decision of, like, which routine I was going to compete because I was training the 16-8 for so long. And, uh, you know, I just really don't like pulling skills out. But I knew it was the smart decision regarding how consistent my skills were uh, in warm-ups. So I ended up doing a 16-2 routine. Um, I qualified the finals, and then from there on, I just knew like I had to, I had to go all out. You know, uh, everyone's going to be upgrading for finals, and you can't be that guy who who doesn't. You know, so, yeah. so I just went absolutely all out and just enjoyed the moment, and the cards played out just right for me, and I ended up taking gold. It, it probably nice. one of the most exciting moments of my life. Yo, that set was clean. That, <laughs> man, that was a clean set. So my follow-up question to that is, what was your mindset going in? I mean, I always wonder that with, with great gymnasts like yourself, before you go up, like you're raising your hand in your mind, are you saying, I'm about to bone this set? Like, what what are you thinking about right when you raise your hand to the judge and you're about to approach that apparatus? Well, that meet was actually unique. I Typically at competitions, I do think to myself, like, oh, I'm about to like attack this thing. But when it came to the Melbourne World Cup, I, I kind of just stood there waiting for the judge to raise his hand. And I was pretty nervous, right? So I was just looking out at the crowd. And I was like, dang, like, what am I nervous for? Like, this is exciting. I made it to this point in my gymnastics career. So I kind of just looked out at the crowd and gave a smile and just really enjoyed the moment. And then I looked down and the judge was raising his hand. So I, <laughs> so I was like, oh, shoot, here we go. <laughs> Uh, that's great that's great you made a uh, just now you mentioned um, upgrading your routine um well from prelims to the finals uh take me take me through that process of um you know thinking about upgrades because i know guys I've, I've seen that in high bar um typically i don't really see that from ring guys they usually do the same hard set um, uh, now I don't even think P bars even. Maybe you could downgrade. People might take stuff out of P bars, but they always try to max out. Take me to the through the st strategy of the upgrading from prelims to to the finals. Um, yeah. Well, for pommel horse, it might be a little bit more unique than other events. Um, just regarding how consistent you can do skills and how unstable the event is in general. Even for guys that are, you know, phenomenal. Um, it's, it's pretty easy to make a mistake that could cost you making finals. Um, so it, it's pretty common that guys that have like a mid-16 range set will downgrade to like a 16 set um, and just do it as clean as they can in order to make finals. And uh, just me knowing like the competition there, I felt comfortable doing that. Um, if, if I was at like a, you know, more difficult like world championships or like Olympic level competition, um, I would absolutely do the sixteen eight routine in prelims and finals. Gotcha. But, yeah. And is that is that is that a how many skills are you upgrading? Are you are you adding skill? How many skills are you taking out? How many skills are you adding? You know, for our viewers and people uh, new to gymnastics to understand that process of uh, of, of doing that in, in that in that situation. 
Yeah, so um, for preliminaries, I instead of doing a G flop, I did an E flop, and I okay. also took out the bazugo entirely, and I didn't replace it with any skills, so I counted like an A circle or something. Okay, so, so it's, it's like a I, shuffling around of things, like you kind of shuffle around from, uh, you know, is it a certain requirement skill that you that you do better, and so to speak, like you might have a certain requirement that you might have a very high level skill that you sub, sub is that what you're saying, basically? Um, I mostly just listen to my body and mm. like the training I've done going into it. So um, if my G flop is really consistent, but like my bazooka is a little off or my zone's a little off, then I'll put those skills in question and I'll keep like gotcha. it all comes down to how your body is reacting in the time. Hey, that's smart. That's smart. So the Olympics are getting pushed back. Does that change or have you got any updates from FIG or anything in terms of what's now going to be the new way to qualify? Is it the same meet? I know you had to leave early from Baku um, because of the pandemic. So I mean, what what's next in terms of you qualifying for the Olympics? Um. So, yes. Most of the competitions will be repeated. Unfortunately, the Baku World Cup will not be repeated, and instead they will be counting the qualification scores as the final scores, um, which I unfortunately missed because I had to rush back to the country regarding the pandemic. So um, that path for me is essentially over, but there are still other ways uh, for the USA to earn a specialist spot, uh, such as the all-around World Cups, which we are currently leading. And also uh, Pan American Championships. If we have an all-rounder place in the top two spots, USA will also get another uh, spot there. And, and then from that point, I have to earn it uh, regarding um, Olympic trials, probably. But yeah. Nice. Okay. And last question. So you mentioned you have a pommel horse outside in your backyard. I mean, what are you doing out there? How does that even work? I mean, because usually backyards, high? yeah, usually backyards is kind of a weird situation. Do you get like a lot of, you know, unevenness when you're swinging? What's that? What's that scenario like? Yeah, so it's actually crazy. Um, so my dad built a playground way, way back in the day, and he had to make it level. So he has some like sand he put down, so like the the ground doesn't okay. like sink in or anything. Um, anyways, we got rid of that, and I got a pommel horse, maybe eight years ago it's an it's an old school amf pommel horse that we got from a high school right wow. so this thing's old right um and that's an antique that's an antique pommel. yeah practically and um i got new pommels for it and i broke it in the leather's like really hard and round but yeah. but it doesn't shake at all that metal base is so sturdy it's like actually insane so all i do is i put a couple mats over like the metal uh stands on it and you know i feel pretty safe enough so i've been doing like travels uh flops i haven't tried any like zones or bazoogos because the pommels are quite different yeah um, but they're more I, round correct I think pommels yeah, yeah, more they're, rounded. yeah they're, they're more around for sure but um i was able to make a busanari on it a couple days ago and it'll probably be the only busanari i ever do on that thing <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Nice, nice. And just so we end in, uh, the show on a positive note, for all the gymnasts out there, like you, the younger ones that are stuck at home, quarantined, I mean, do you have any words of uh, inspiration or encouragement for that group to just stay with it? Well, I just think to myself, like, every day, like, how much I really love gymnastics and how much this quarantine is making me, like, want to do gymnastics um uh, i think that alone is motivating me and i'm just looking forward to 2021 and the opportunities that will eventually come and in the meantime i have so much smaller things i can work on like flexibility or strength and i know for a fact if i really work on that by the time i get back into the gym i might even feel like a better gymnast you know other than my endurance <laughs> right right so keep your head up guys Perhaps. nice you'll get back in it soon Right. All right, all right, Stephen. Well, yo, thanks for coming on. Good luck yeah, with your training, you. and you know, we'll see you soon out there. I'm sure everyone's looking forward to it. Well, thank you so much, and thank you for having me. It's, it's been fun. Awesome.